Your story to me is pretty fascinating because you went from, I would say, like the elite level blue collar job in mm -hmm. my mind. I'm gonna go make some ammo and sell it. Like I learned some stuff in high school, you know, and college, but like at the end of the day, like you walk out into the real world and you don't know how to like live. It's not enough to like have a life. School is just grooming people to be employed. I'm not like a nutritionist or I, I don't know all the ins and outs, but just from my simple monkey brain, it's like, I'm not, I'm not eating that. It's not whack mm -hmm. to like look at the ingredients. Yeah. And then you start looking at ingredients on stuff and it's just like, wow, dude, like everything is trash. Mm -hmm. Why does everything have oil in it? And my phone's like, Bing. my wife's like, who's texting you this late? And I like look at it and it's like a random number. It's like 14, five or 16 inch. I'm like, Jesus, man, like, come on, man. Like it's, it's nine o'clock at night, you know? Some people like, oh. that's all they think about, you know? Uh. But, yeah, when all I'm thinking about is like the barrel differences, and do I get a 45 or 60? Right. It's like dog, like that. It's like working out. Gentlemen, welcome back to the Armo Podcast. It is a ever warring and tour rivalry of the company's podcast between administrative results and managerial outcomes. There is a constant feud. The war rages on, so your support of buying war bonds. Absolutely just a joke, whatever that means, is greatly appreciated. Today, my guest is Luis of Badlands Ammo. Thanks for coming on to the podcast, dude. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I like you a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we like you, too. Um, no no homo. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, man. I'm just happy to be here, and yeah. I'm glad you think I'm interesting enough to actually be here. Well, I, I found, I was thinking about this, and I was like, your story to me is pretty fascinating because you went from... Uh, like a very, I would say, like the elite level blue collar job in mm -hmm. my mind. And then you're like, I'm going to go make some ammo and sell it. Yeah. So you 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 did a massive shift and pivot. And then now you're doing pretty good doing. Yeah. Um, so my first job was welding. Not mm -hmm. my first job, but like my main career, right, was welding. And you can do pretty good for yourself on that for like actually working with your hands. Mm -hmm. Um. My wife was pregnant, and I traveled a lot, so I was just like, you know what, man, I'm just going to stay and do a little bit of welding here in Arizona. Took a massive pay cut, uh, but at least I could stay home most of the week, you know, sleep in my own bed. Um, and then uh, my daughter was, ha or my wife was having my daughter, and they just weren't liking the time off, and I'm like, dude, I need like two weeks off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's it. And... There's just like a few things, and then they were going from like contractors to employees, so there's gonna be another pay cut there. Mm. I was like, you know what, man, I'm I'm out of here. So I sat in my truck on the clock, and I was just thinking to myself, like, what do I want to do? That's actually fun. I'm done working for the man. I'm done like providing my services to somebody else. I want to service myself. Uh, and I was just like, off road would be cool. And I'm like. Ah, that's still like welding and inhaling toxic gases and fiberglass and all that. So I'm just like, you know what? The next thing is shooting, which you're still inhaling toxic gases yeah, and everything. You, you know what I mean? But <laughs> um, at least, uh, you know, it, it's a little bit more fun. It's not such labor and in intensive work. Um, so that moment there, I literally just went online and I was like, how do you get an FFL? Um, and then I just called the ATF and had them send me an application packet. Um, and then I just started buying a bunch of stuff, and I was just like, I'm going to buy everything I could find. Um, yeah, we bought Canada out of primers. That's the only reason we were able to load ammo during uh, during COVID. Wait, wait, you you bought Canada? Yeah. So out of like the entire country of Canada, pretty much like anything you could find online, we bought. Whoa. Uh, so working in North Dakota, you know, we're only like a few hours away from Canada, and those guys are like shooters you know hunters and all that stuff but it's like a different culture um they don't shoot as much as we do right like your gun has to be locked up in armory or like you know, you still, they, it's like yeah, weird, they right? got some very big cuck rules on right them. and then that year was the beginning of like their assault weapon ban so Ooh. you were actually having to sell your guns uh and had them destroyed or something like that but there was a company out of uh arizona um that was, they figured out this way, like, hey, a lot of people from Canada come to Arizona, so why don't you export your guns to Arizona, and we'll keep them for you, and when you snowbird down here, you can come pick them up and shoot them, or we'll sell them for you. 
So instead of selling them to the government for 200 bucks or whatever, uh, this place was exporting them all from Canada to the U.S. So I got them to import all the primers for me. Ooh. Yeah. So we essentially just, I went online, I spent hours online, and I called every single person. I mean, we bought millions and millions of primers. Um, and then, like, after a, a few months, they're just like, uh, distributors are asking why we're going through so many primers. And we we told them there's this place in Arizona that's buying them all. And they're like, because they're all coming from here. So they were getting exported from the U.S. to Canada, from Canada back to the U.S. Because <laughs> they have, like, a certain allotment, you yeah, know? Like, yeah. they have to feed them, keep them happy. So they actually implemented, like, export rules that are just, like... Is that because of you guys? Yeah, they're like, you, you can't just import it and export it right back out. You know, the minute it hits your shelf. So, yeah, we, we were buying everything, and they're Sorry. just like, yeah, man, we can't do that anymore. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that was fun. So usually when I have guests, like, the, the past number of guests I've had on have all been, like, except for Kyle Rittenhouse. Mm -hmm. Like, they've all been YouTubers. Right. Like, the podcast is still pretty new. Right. And so I can kind of understand the jump from, like, a full-time job to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then, like, we kind of break it down. But what was, like, the jump from... You were essentially doing your normal job, mm -hmm. and then was there like a, hey, like you're taking out a business loan? Were you doing like just your own money? Like what was the what was the feeling? And then how'd your wife feel? Because usually, like everyone I've talked to, the wives are always like, "This is a dumb idea." Right. So I don't know if it was the same so thing that happened for you. Me and my wife have like a pretty weird dynamic, and I didn't realize it was weird till talking to people. Um, like my wife has her own job, her own career, her own bank account. Um, I, I have the same, like, I don't know how much money she has. She doesn't know how much money I have. I don't tell her what to do with her money. She doesn't tell me what to do with my money. Yeah, usually uh, usually it's not like that in right. marriages. Yeah. yeah, like I like people, you know, these guys are like, yeah, I'm going to the bank and I got a, an account with my wife. I'm just like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> you know, like it, it, that was just yeah. never a thing. Um, like my parents are pretty traditional. So like my dad's the one that brings money, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's always how it was. And here's a load of money for groceries type of thing. Uh so yeah, like it, like my job has always just been so up and down. Like you know, I'd have anywhere between five and ten jobs a, a year because it was all just projects, right? So you're working one day, you're laid off the next, and then you're working the next or something, you know. So it was always like a roller coaster. So like, I was always traveling. I'm spending too much. I think I spent twenty four grand on groceries one year. Like Ooh. yeah, like uh, that's some people's like entire salary. Yeah, Jeez, uh, man. so like it, like our money's always been separate. So like her, she she's just like, oh, that's what you want to do. Cool. Like she never really said anything. Um, she's just like, yeah, dude, just do what makes you happy. Just be here when I need you, and you know that that's about it. Help around the house. Like that's all she asked for. Mm -hmm. So, um, but um. Jonathan, do you remember Jonathan? Mm -hmm. um, so he was a welder as well. Um, and he actually took my position in North Dakota before I left. So he was still working over there. Um, and I were like best friends. So I was just like, hey, man, like thinking about quitting. And he was like, oh, damn. Um, I've never had like a problem like leaving something. Um, you know, and so I was just like, yeah, man, I'm going to quit. And I'm going to just start this. I already started paperwork. He's like, let me in, dude. And I'm just like, ah, I don't want any investors. Like, I don't want any partners or, you know, it's just messy. And he was like, well, all right, well, let me buy one of the presses or something. And I was like, okay, you know, we can do that. Uh, we ordered the press and then we just started buying components together. Um, he's using his personal money. I was using my personal money. Have you started like a business account for it yet or is it all just your personal? Uh, yeah. So essentially when you start a business, you know, you get like articles of organization. Mm -hmm. um, I just hit up my accountant and I was just like, hey, I'm starting a business. This is what I want it to be. Um, and then as soon as I got that document, I go to the bank, you know, started yep. a, a business account and then we put all our money in there. Um, and then we'd start buying stuff. So yeah, you started buying stuff with your business account. Yeah. Yeah. Cause your, it gets messy yeah. when you start oh, doing yeah, it with absolutely. your personal account, you know, it, it just, I've learned that one the hard way. Yeah. It's like yeah. a recipe for an audit, you know? Oh yeah. So, um, I've helped a lot of people like, you know, our friends, like everyone's dropping merch and stuff now. So they're just like, Oh, I'm like. Make sure that you're getting the money put into a separate bank account so it's mm. easy to, you know, uh, reconcile at the end of the month and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, he kind of, like, became a partner, an investor um, whenever we were making, like, tough decisions or, like, you know, big, big moves. He was part of the conversation. But as far as uh, he was just an investor, like, he, he didn't have any stake in the company or anything like that. And um, it took about 
a couple of years to grow to where it, it took about a year before we start paying ourselves. And mm-hmm. keep in mind, like, where did you guys start? Uh, 2021. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like I'm used to like making good money and then not making money for six months and then go back to work type of thing. So like money's never really been a worry for me. Uh, you know, I've been lucky in that way. It's just like, Hey man, like if I can go to the store, buy what I want, eat what I want and I can pay my bills, like I'm happy, you know? Mm. Um, and, uh, you're not trying to get the Ferrari. No, no, yeah. dude. I drive a 20 year old truck. Nice. Like it's a good spot yeah, to be. Yeah. Like I, I drive a 20 year old truck. Like, my vehicle's no longer my personality. Mm. Um, I used to buy a new truck like every couple of years back when I was welding and stuff like that. And I just kind of grew out of it. Like it's not a status. Yeah, it's anymore. a big money pit. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we were just, it took forever to pay ourselves. And my business mentor, um, he's like a North Dakota oil field guy, mm. um, very su- successful. Um, he said, don't get any partners because what's going to happen is, they're going to realize how much work this takes and they're going to want out in a year and a half to two years. And then you're going to be essentially just going through that mm-hmm. if they're on like paperwork and stuff like that. And uh, sure enough, you know, like a year and a half, two years into it, he's just like, hey, man, like I really like where this is going, but like I'm trying to buy a house. I'm trying to get married. I'm trying to do this. Mm-hmm. And like he was the highest paid person, but like, dude, making 22 bucks an hour. And trying to get married and trying to get a car and to, you know what I mean like yeah it's hard it's, it's, you know it's definitely tricky right so yeah. I was like yeah man go go back to welding and you know do your thing so he uh, you know he applied where he wanted to go and it's not as well paying as like North Dakota money but it's a lot better he now has his house he's got property he got married you know he he did the whole thing so um, as a friend I'm happy yes um, you know as a business it was just like man it's gonna suck because he was like my my right hand guy, Mm -hmm. you know, he took care of the, uh, like the day to day issues and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Um, but ever since he left, I just kind of let go of the whole micromanaging thing. And now we have, you know, other guys that stepped up to that role and they're, they're really killing it. Like Mm -hmm. everyone I have is crucial to our operation. Um, everyone thinks I have too many employees, but you know, I pay myself a little so I can pay them and make my life easier and have time to do stuff like this. And I'm not over there, like, you know, doing all the work myself. So, I mean, you guys, as far as ammo companies go, would you consider yourself still small Uh, compared to like the big massive ones, you know? Yeah. Like one of the, like one of federal's like brass making machine costs more than my entire operation. (laughs) Like they're like 11 million bucks, right? Like to make one process. Oh my Um, gosh. You know, we, we have, quite a bit of equipment like mm. you could buy a couple of houses type of thing but like yes. it's nothing compared to um like what the big guys are making you know so. i mean i think it's still very cool because you know in a in a weird way you're offering guys an escape from the normal monotonous jobs right by doing yeah. getting to work where you work yeah. you guys still get to do some fun stuff so i think it's pretty impressive and it's really cool to hear. Like, I didn't even know you had, like you had a business mentor back in was it South South Dakota or North Dakota? Uh, North Dakota. North Dakota. Yeah, like that's pretty business savvy mm-hmm. because it's like you're working the line, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you work. Yeah, you're working the line. Mm-hmm. You're doing your thing, and then you're also getting like fed some really good solid advice yeah. about business. Like it seems like you were getting jockeyed up to do something pretty cool before you even knew it. Yeah. So um, I've always like hung out with people that are older than me. Like I very rarely try to surround myself with people that are like, like, I want to look up to people, Mm -hmm. right? Like, I don't want to be the biggest baller in the room, right? Like, because you kind of stay static as opposed to being inspired by other people and just be like, dude, like, that's what I want for myself, uh, taking their advice, you know, so I don't know, dude, like older people have always just been like, I like you, son. Like, I see myself in you. And they like mm-hmm. always just like help me in any way they can. Uh, so this guy's name is Dan. Um, he's, he used to be my landlord. Hmm. Like that, that's how I met him. Um, like we were the company I was working for. Uh, they had their like lay down yard, which is kind of where like, it's like headquarters. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> they were renting it from Dan. And he shows up like housing was really, really bad in North Dakota at the time. Um, so 
you either slept in a camper or in like a a FEMA like little trailer, like a twenty <laughs> foot trailer with like four dudes, right? Like a FEMA camp, like yeah, like yeah. legit, yeah. Um, or a man camp, and you're like, you know, you sleep from this time to this time, and then you grab your bag, put it underneath the bed, and then another dude comes and sleeps like while you're at work type of mm. thing. Um, you're just roughing it out, there. right? So Making like it was me and money. my dad, yeah. right? Like I woke up one day and my dad's like, hey, uh, your brother doesn't want to wake up because my, my brother was my dad's helper. Mm. Um, and he's like, you're going to North Dakota. And I'm like, I don't want to go to North Dakota. I was like 18 or something, 19 maybe. Uh, I never wanted to be a welder because my dad was always gone. And I was like, I don't want that. Like, I don't always want to be gone. I want to be I like money is great and everything, but mm. like I want to have a quality of life. And mm. so I was like, I'm not going. He's like, well, this is the difference between us, like paying our bills or not. I was like, Okay, I woke up at 10 by 1, one o'clock. We were on our way to North Dakota. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so we got there, and, uh, you know, we show up to the yard. We still didn't even have anywhere to sleep. Um, and, you know, like a few weeks, uh, we stayed with, like, a buddy or something. And then, like, a few weeks go by, um, and this dude rolls up, and he's like, hey, I got a triple wide. Like, who wants to rent it? I was like me i'm like 18 like God. you know what i mean yeah and my dad's like hell yeah like way to step up you know like found us a house <laughs> and, and the guy's like yeah it's uh 3800 bucks and i was like fucking sold for a tra- for a single wide trailer oh dude. my yeah. God. yeah uh, 3800 bucks um that's primo real estate up there baby yeah yeah so we moved in and like y- you know like dude these things are like they're dragging them from like the midwest mm-hmm. and like you know they, they bring like spare tires you know like they're blown out tires like fucking they're just pieces of shit. Um, so they set it, and the Great guy's like, business investment for Dan, dude. Oh, dude, he made so much money off those things. They're like oh. 20 grand. Yeah. And then you charge 3,800 bucks a month. Oh. But hey, if you have the means to like make that happen, that's for you to get, you know? Yeah. That's how I've always seen it. So he's like, Yeah, like if there's any problems, like you got to fix it yourself. I'm just like, Sick. I'm glad my 3,800 bucks is getting me all this bargain, you know, all mm. this, you know, and. Uh, so we just kind of became friends. Like, dude, the shower doesn't work. Like, yeah, I come over to the tool room and like grab this and fucking fix it. We're like, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so we just kind of became friends and he's like, Hey, I need, I need some welding done. Uh, and I started like doing a little bit of like side jobs for him. Um, I wasn't a welder yet. I was still a helper. Um, and we just became buddies. Mm -hmm. Um, and something that really, uh, like stuck with me, um, like we had already kind of developed a relationship and I did some work for him. And I was like, ah, it, it'll be this much. And he was like, you sounded like you were hesitant. Like, is it that much or mm-hmm. like, is it not? I'm like, well, you know, if I told you what this would cost, you'd probably shit your pants. He was like, listen, bro, business is business. Mm. Just because you're a friend doesn't mean I give you a break off your rent, right? So you're providing a service to me. I know what it's worth. Charge me what it's worth. Don't confuse friendship with business. Mm-hmm. I'm like... Oh, that's pretty legit. And it meant a lot to me because this is a person who's like now a friend who I do business with. He does business with me. And we've always had like a really straight up relationship. Um, I I want to cut you. I'm so happy you think that way. So to be on this podcast, it's actually going to cost you $50,000. Yeah, that's fine, dude. Okay. Just uh, Just let me put on my my Amex. (laughs) (laughs) That's a joke. Uh, I don't even have an Amex. Uh, (laughs) um, But... um, yeah, like we've done a bunch of business. Um, every time, like I have a legal question, like the dude's done it, right? Like yeah. multiple businesses, literally a millionaire, um, owns like thirteen houses. Like the, the dude's just, you yeah. know, has yeah. ten million dollars worth of equipment. Like the dude balls, mm-hmm. and uh, the fact that he like takes time out of his day uh, to help me through stuff, um, like it means a lot to me. And he's kind of like my business mentor. So anytime I like run into some problems, I'm just like, hey, like, what do you suggest I do here? He's like, well, I've already been there. This is what I did. This is what you should do. Yeah. And it, it really helped a lot. So what I tell people is like, dude, just just ask. Someone's always mm-hmm. going to know something that you don't, you know, like, yes. It, it, no matter how simple it is, right? Like people don't even realize that you need a separate bank account to like start a business. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's, there's a account. lot behind oh, the yeah. scenes, man. Yeah. There's a lot behind the scenes. Yeah. It's pretty cool. You got a mentor like, yeah. that early on. Like, yeah. I think a lot of young guys need that, especially if they're taking a leap into business stuff right. 
because there's so much you have to navigate. Right. It's like even right now I'm still learning everything I have to try mm -hmm. and do. It's a lot. Yeah. Now, one thing I was very curious about, and if you have any advice for like guys out there, mm -hmm. because I've been to your shop a bunch, and you guys are very, you and your crew are mm -hmm. very technically proficient. It seems yep. like in all things. Yeah. Like when it comes to machinery, welding, like even, um, like even down to like the small stuff. I think you don't even think about. Like I was looking at your lighting setup for when you guys film content. Mm -hmm. Like it's very dialed in. Like it's it's very good. How did you guys get like so good, or you in particular get so good at like just working with your hands? Um, so like I'm first generation. Uh, you know, American. My parents are from Mexico. Uh, my mom grew up with like servants. Like she wasn't even raised by her parents. Like she was raised by servants. She grew up with the uh, yeah the silver spoon. Yeah, nice. My dad was dirt poor. Like he had to play basketball to like nice, get his brother's dude. meals. Yeah, right? like yeah. My dad's like five foot nothing, dude, and he nice. like he balls hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so just like he used to just like. You know, he would uh, any money he made would be for his brothers. Like he put his brothers to school. Um, so is he the oldest? Uh, he 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 was the second oldest, mm. but then his brother died. Oh, uh, so he kind of took over. He put all his brothers to college and stuff. Dang. Um, and then they came here, and then they started welding for like three bucks an hour or something <sighs> like that. So him and his brother. So there's like five welders in my family, um, and like that is the best money you can make, like using your hands, right? Mm. Um, yeah, those guys. From what you were telling me too, clean house. Yeah, yeah. Like they um, very good. Nowadays, like you know, shop welding not so much. Like yeah, you probably make more than the next guy, but like traveling, pipeline welding, stuff like that makes really good money. Um, so when you're like dirt poor and you can't afford like tools and stuff, like you make them, right? Mm -hmm. Like so, I've always literally been just destroying my dad's stuff when he's like at the house because uh, when you weld, you, you weld out of your truck, right? So mm -hmm. you, you use your truck. Uh, that's where all your tools are. Mm -hmm. So you go to these places, um, and you need you need to be self sufficient. Like you need to have everything in your truck to get the job done. That's why you're getting paid the big bucks, right? Um, so there's like a bunch of tools that yeah you can buy made. Uh, some tools don't even exist. So you like figure out like you invent stuff, right? Yeah. So like I watched my dad do that like every day. Like after work, they'd come. They'd make sure their trucks like. They're good. The tires are good. Tires mm -hmm. rotated. You know, it's not leaking or like, you know, just stuff like that. Like they go through all their equipment after it gets destroyed all day and then they clean it all up. So like I was always like a kid just destroying all that with mm -hmm. them. Right. So I just kind of grew up around handy people. Mm -hmm. um, and what I tell people now that I have kids, like when you're in the garage and you're like cleaning and your kids behind you and they're just like undoing everything you just did, like let them. Or else they're going to be useless pieces of shit. Yeah. You know, uh, they're, they're not going to be like if you're just like shutting them down all the time and you're like, no, you're going to make a mess. Like sometimes it's just worth doing the extra work and letting them in that like little environment. Develop the, the yeah. neural pathways. Right. Yeah. And they'll want to hang out with you. They'll want to work yeah. with you. They'll want to like like my daughter helps me clean up weeds, you know, like pick weeds and she grabs them. I throw them on the floor. She puts them in a bucket and nice. not for like 10 minutes for like an hour. Dang. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. You just got to let him play, and, and that's kind of what my dad always said. It's just like, yeah, I just let him destroy everything. I let him take everything apart, and that's why he's handy. Mm. Uh, and then you compare that to, like, other kids where they're like, you're going to ruin that. Like, get yeah. away. Like, go back inside. Like, now they don't even want to come outside. They're just playing video games all day, you know? Yeah. So um, that's kind of where I got my handiness, I think, is just from being in that environment since I was a kid. Um, and, like, you know – my parents were just always like, do everything yourself, right? Like, mm. you're going to pay somebody to do something for you. Like, they're just figuring it out, too. Mm. So, like, why don't you figure it out yourself, save some money, yeah. you learn the lesson, and now you know that, right? So that's always been there. Did like, you ever have any issues when you were doing the business stuff of, like, okay, am I going to do it myself, or should I have pay someone else to do it so I can save myself some time? Did you ever have like, any conflict of interest there? Uh, so not at the beginning, um, like we, we did like all of our tables, we did all our electrical, um, we did like, um, all the plumbing and stuff like that in our shop. It was just like a building with walls. Mm -hmm. Um, so we did like, you know, we built our cabinets, like we did everything essentially cause we needed the money for components. Mm -hmm. Um, but now as we're getting busier, like there's this balance where, uh, yeah, I could be out there doing that myself, but I can make more like use of my time by letting one of my guys do it 
um, as opposed to me doing it. And then I have time to go out and film or, you know, mm-hmm. go out and spend time with my family. It's just, I feel like at the beginning, like you should probably try to do everything yourself, yeah. right? Kind of like oh, you, like you, yeah. you were you know, like, you need to stretch. Uh, you have nothing but time yes. right? at, at the beginning. And then it, it, it flips. You have money, but you have no time. So it's just like, use the money you have, buy yourself some time, mm-hmm. do what you want, or else you're going to get burnt out. And then it just turns into this vicious cycle, and then it just yes. turns into a job. Yeah, right? trying to do everything yourself is exhausting. Yeah. I, w- I definitely learned that one the hard way. Getting, like, editors mm-hmm. and having other people do stuff for you is so right. much – it's even just more fun as far as, like, the creative process goes. Oh, I'm I sure. talk about this all the time. Like, you, you go out, you film, you knock something out. I used to have to go and sit for, like, a day or two editing everything. Right. And it's like I already w- listened to myself talk for hours, mm-hmm. and it's just so boring. But then now if I can turn it over to an editor – they, it's like, it's, it's essentially like you show up, you do your thing and then you get to get the finished product and you're like, oh, this is fun. Like it, it, it right. made it more fun. Oh, for sure. I even turn into the guy now where it's like, if there's a, it's kind of like, kind of lame in my opinion, but at the same time I turn into the guy, like if there's a project around the house, I'm like, ah, like I'm so busy to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. I'd rather just pay someone to go do like right. do it. So. Yeah. I got in that groove too. Hmm. Um, and like my wife will like look at a piece of furniture. She's like, oh, look, it's only 200 bucks. I'm like, I can make that. Mm. And she's just like, that's what you always say. <laughs> yeah. And like some like there's something about just being able to do things yourself that like, you know, it brings satisfaction yes. and, and all this stuff. And it's just like, fuck yeah, like I made that. Um, but there comes a time and point where it's just like, all right, do I go spend time with my wife mm-hmm. or do I like mow the lawn? Or you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like one of those things where um you just kind of kind of pick and choose your battles, yeah, man. Yeah, pick really your battles, too. I love that you're, like, so dialed in when it comes to doing stuff yourself because I feel like in the gun world, like, we always think about the worst-case scenario, mm-hmm. like the apocalypse happens. Right. You're essentially going to rebuild your society, which yeah. is a good skill to have. Because yeah. I think a lot of guys, at least if they're just civilians, they're like, okay, how do I fight? And it's like, well, ideally you're not going to be fighting all the time because right. that's how you die. Yeah. So yeah. rebuilding society is kind of important. Yeah, no, and I don't think it's ever too late, right? Like um, the long-haired boy at the shop, Bullet, mm, mm. Um, he he did some stuff with his dad, but, like, he turned into a man when I took him to North Dakota, mm. right? Like, he, that's where he learned. Like, the dude's, like, done roofing with me, trimming, like, drywall, concrete, mm. welding, like, fix your truck, like, just everything. Like, that kid's got more experience underneath his belt for a 22-year-old than most men, Yeah, right? And it's just because of, like, the setting that he was put in. Um, Like, most of our guys at our shop are uh, either, like, law enforcement, military, um, or have worked at a gun shop before. Um, My main guy now, Forrest, um, he was a Marine, and then he joined the Army, um, and then he worked for uh, a security company, like, private detail type of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's all he knew. And... um, as he's just like, yeah, man, like his water pump went out. And he, one day he's like, hey, man, uh, I got to leave early. I'm like, for what? It's like, I got an appointment. He's like, my my pulley went out. And then they told me that my water pump was going out. And they're trying to charge me like 1200 bucks. And I'm just like, okay, like, why don't you see how much the part is? It was like 150 bucks. And I was yeah. like, dude, we can knock this out in an hour. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, you do that? I was like, yeah, like, let, let's do that. And he's <laughs> Light like, work. Buddy. Right. And he's like, yeah. oh, okay, cool. So we ordered the part. Um, we knocked it out. And mm-hmm. he was like, dude, I'm so excited to learn how to do this. Like, I know nothing about cars. Yeah. So like, they weren't handy before they worked there. Like, yeah. I'm like, as handy as a guy in the military can get. Like, I don't like, I think it was infantry or something. Like, there's some skill there, right? Oh, yeah. But, no, they're definitely talented folks. Right. It, as far as like, this tool's for this. Or, mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, I don't have this right tool. I'm like, oh, that's fine. We use this. Like, this is a good substitute for that. And, uh, yeah, we fixed this truck in, like, an hour and a half, like, you know, on the clock, and we went back to loading. You know yeah. what I mean? He saved 1200 bucks. Nice. Uh, so it's never too late, you know? Like, just mm-hmm. kind of surround yourself around people who, um, you know, are willing to teach you and, you know, like, it, just because you're 25 doesn't mean you can't learn how to change your oil in your car. Oh, yeah. It, no, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, if that's something you want to do. Like, if yeah. you don't have time, then, like, whatever. Take it to the to the dealership or mm-hmm. something. But um, I was getting in that groove where, like, I used to maintain my vehicles, like, every week. Like, because mm-hmm. I'm always on the road, right? Like I said, I drive a 20-year-old truck. So it took me, like, a whole year to get that thing to stop leaking. <laughs> you know, like, countless, like, uh, side-of-the-road fixings and stuff like that. And, and 
uh, once I stopped welding, I just drove it around town. So I didn't really need to keep up with it. So I kind of neglected it. And like, just like a month ago, I was like, all right, I need to quit being a piece of crap. And I brought all my stuff back from the shop to my house. I worked on my wife's car, all both my trucks. And I'm like, oh, it feels nice to, you know, get this done. It's mm-hmm. finally over. And I'm not letting some like $12 an hour goober neck mm-hmm. at Jiffy Lube forget <laughs> to like add an extra quart of oil or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you're looking to do something, dude, like. Figure it yeah, out. Figure it out. Yeah. Like YouTube it. Like the dude that you're paying to do it yeah. is just figuring it out himself. Yeah. Like yeah. that's literally what it is, you know. So I don't know. Just figure it out. No, that's pretty cool stuff, <laughs> yeah. man. I feel like in today's society it's definitely not as valued because everyone's like, just go to college and right. be, a, be a corporate yeah. drone. It's like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. College is cool, man. I went to college and the minute I realized that it's a massive propaganda, I'm like, Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I didn't fit in. There was two people I didn't fit in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a guy who had done like two tours and me. Mm-hmm. Everybody else had no life experience. Uh, I was already a welder. Like I already had money. I already had this. Like I was already set. Like my dad's like, my dream is for you to be an engineer. And I was like, you know what? Like I should probably get some kind of diploma or something, you know? So mm-hmm. I went back to school and I'm like, dude. How screw. long did you last? I went like three and a half. Like I was like a few classes away from getting like my associates. Mm-hmm. I was just like community college. It was just like random stuff. Um, like, I'm sure engineers can make a lot more money, but it's like starting pay is like 50 grand. I'm like, my helper makes 120. <laughs> like, I'm fucking out. You know, like, uh, it's, I was just like, yeah. it'd be a nice piece of paper to have, say I went to college, but it's just, it's, it's so against the grain. Mm-hmm. And they're so used to like just manipulating like kids fresh out of school. Oh, yeah. That have no life experience and like, oh, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. We didn't fit in at all. So. It's like they're trying to make the next level employee, right. you know, like high school. Like right. High school was literally designed, I think, by the Rockefellers. Oh, I'm sure. To make or, – or public school, at least, was designed, I think, by, like, the Rockefellers Ooh. to make really good, like, factory drones. Right. And then college is probably just the next level of that. Right. Well, you need somebody to manage those guys. I, I'm not saying, like, there's good degrees out there. It's just for the most part now. Like, even when I was going through college, I was like, man, this is – mega gay like i don't yeah. want to be here like it's just so boring and all the stuff i want to do it's like i'm, I'm not doing it so. right yeah yeah man um i feel like they don't even teach you how to write a check in school yeah like not that people write checks anymore mm-hmm. right but like they don't teach you anything about like life like it, they're just like you know do this and this is what you're supposed to do and like i learned some stuff in high school you know and, and college but like at the end of the day like you walk out into the real world and you don't know how to like live with yourself, right? Like it's just, it's not enough to like have a life in, mm-hmm. in the real world. Um, and it's just like, hey, like how about you tell people like, you know, what their budget should be on this instead of like blowing it all on this one thing or, mm-hmm. you know, maybe you should allocate some resources to that. Like don't put your eggs all in one basket. You, you know, yeah. like they, they, school is just grooming people to be employees. Yeah, I'll that's give, all it is. I'll give them props. Like those those kids that go through it are very good at like doing mm-hmm. school. Like right. the school, like school works actually pretty hard, especially yeah. at that level yeah. of academia. Like how much they study and right. how like they sit down and like cultivate a research right. paper. That's impressive. It's just like when that rubber meets the road of actually making money out in the real world. It's like I don't need a research paper on this. Yeah. And then for, like using your college your degree to go get something good mm-hmm. becomes very competitive even still because they're always like, well, you need two to three years of life experience or job experience. They just got out of college. They're like, well, what's the point of this degree now? So, mm-hmm. Yeah, so. put that effort into uh, starting your own business yeah. and, and like you'd be successful. Yeah. You, you know, like that's, that's what I tell people. Like everyone um, – like, people are hitting me up. I'm like, dude, why don't you start your own thing? Like, why don't you do this? Like, I'll help you. I'll help mm-hmm. you get your LLC. I'll give you my accountant's information. It's a big leap. Some people, I think, so, I honestly think that some folks just don't want to worry about the, the mental stress of it. Well, yeah, it's a lot easier to show up somewhere, yeah. clock in, and have somebody tell you what to do. Yeah. And, and that's what most people like. You mm-hmm. know, like, I don't like people telling me what to do. So, yeah. Like, it's just like, I want to be my own boss. I feel like you have to not like people telling you what to do so much. You're like, all right, I'll risk it all to. Start oh, yeah, a absolutely. Business. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I've never cared about the consequences. Like, I'll figure yeah. it out. Like, yeah. I was looking for a job when I found this one. Mm. Like, you know, the grass is always green on the other side. Sometimes it's not. But, um, yeah, bro, you got to risk it, dude, you know? get the biscuit <laughs> like, yeah no, nothing lights a fire underneath your ass like not having a backup plan yeah you know and that's always what i've found and i'm just like 
I'm very impulsive. Brother, you got to burn the boats. <laughs> you got to burn the boats, brother. Yeah. Like, I'm very impulsive. So uh, I'm just like, yeah, I don't like this place anymore. Mm. And then the boss comes over. He's like, hey, man, like, I noticed you were sitting in your truck. I'm like, here you go, buddy. I'm fucking out. <laughs> don't know explanation. Get in my truck fucking leave. You know what I mean? Boom, there he goes. Uh, and, and then, yeah, like an hour later, you got a job somewhere else because mm. I have a skill. You can't take that from me. You know yeah. what I mean? So it, it's get a skill, do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it, man. That's yeah. pretty dialed in. Do you remember the uh, the thing going around on the interwebs where it was like all the dudes were thinking about the Roman Empire? Uh, no. So there was this thing going around where it's like women, like they're like your lady would ask you, "Hey, what are you thinking about?" And all the mm-hmm. dudes are like, "Ancient Rome." Right. Like all the women realize that all yeah. men think about is ancient Rome, mm-hmm. and then the ladies had their version of that. Do you have like your version of what you think about all the time? Um, yeah, it's like caveman stuff. Like, like mm-hmm. literally, it's just like um, like hunter gatherer type of shit, mm-hmm. right? Like, I'm I'm like, why don't I like doing this? I'm just like, oh. Because we're like we're supposed to be like working all day to mm. make sure we eat. So like my was like you can't sit still. Like I I very rarely sit on my couch. Mm. Like I fall like I I lay down and like I'm on my phone doing work till I fall asleep type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um and it's just like oh it's probably because like you know I was up all night like worrying if I'm gonna be able to stab a mammoth or some shit to eat tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like that, that's kind of what I think your, about your ancestral blood right. memory. Yeah. It's always, it's always been like that far back. Yeah. Not even, not even as adv- like I'm a caveman dude. Yeah. Like I'm not even a Roman, you know? <laughs> uh, so it was just like, Oh, why is this? Like, Oh, it's, it's just in us, man. You know, yeah. like wh- why am I this way? You know what I mean? It's, you know, you're too stubborn to quit or something, you know, like that, that's kind of what I think about. Not so much the Roman empire, but hey, that's okay. Yeah. You're you? allowed to have, uh, you know, for a while it was my version of ancient Rome. It was like, I think even still being an ancient legionary would be pretty right. brutal work. And there'd be some very moral gray areas. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, we have to now crucify 6,000 slaves that revolted and we have to give them the worst possible death just because they were slaves that revolted. It's like, that'd be pretty brutal to do. Yeah. So like, the the moral the moral dilemma and it's like still all all of your leaders will be pedophiles back in the day too right. because and it's all like gay too, probably, yeah probably so that yeah. too and then it's like all your <laughs> like even you would probably be considered a pedophile because you'd be like twenty five and you're like oh, I I got married off to a fifteen year old girl right. it's like hey that world's pretty yeah. uh, compared to now it's like that world's kind of yeah like the idea of conquering Gaul sounds pretty sick until it's like ooh the the yeah. human the, the the human legalities of all that that we know it's like those it it's kind of gnarly stuff. Yeah, but uh, I think a lot of like for me recently, it's probably been just archery. Has been like my new, oh okay, my new side quest, right? Where it's because I do so much gun stuff and gun related like topics, right? Where it's like okay, I I can only shoot a gun so much to where it's like I know, or it's I've done it before, right. and it's like all right, archery is kind of like my new oh. outlet, like my release. Like I've been, I found myself watching just a bunch of archery videos, mm-hmm. whether it's primitive or modern stuff recently. Right, I'm like ah, oh, this is a nice yeah cathartic release from the usual gun stuff yeah the change is definitely uh needed sometimes Mm. and you know like when i go out to dinner with friends and stuff they're just like all they want to do is talk about guns. i'm like bro let's talk about something else yeah it's a boring existence if you talk about guns all the time yeah so um yeah it's nice to have conversations like this that aren't you know gun related I mean, yeah. they can't be. I don't really sure. Care, I mean, but. it's if if the conversation mm-hmm. goes that way. The problem is, it's like when you get known like known as a gun guy, right. and you're around like a normal like you're the, like more normal folks. Mm-hmm. It's like if you're hanging with your girls' friends, and they're like, "Oh, Bajo's into guns," and then some guys like, "Oh yeah, I like guns too. Right. I got a I got a shotgun." Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's it. And it's like, all right, man, I gotta break down the autismo rabbit trail of. Mm-hmm. The MG42 versus, it's like, I don't know, right. it's just a lot. Gentlemen, do you like Millsurp gear? Do you like looking your best? Do you like feeling your best? Americana Pipe Dream has you covered, and they want to make sure you look dripped out to the gills in Millsurp gear and equipment. That's why you should head over to AmericanaPipeDream.com. Link for them will be in the description down below. They're fantastic young Zoomers getting after it in the Millsurp space. Night Vision Knives Manuals, gear, MREs, everything you may need to be kitted and fitted. So, of course, we have to give a big thank you to Americana Pipe Dream Apparel. Gentlemen, we have to also thank Optics Planet, the optic sponsor of Managerial Outcomes. A big thank you to them, and they want to hook you up with 7% off the entire store. So if you do head over to Optics Planet, they will 
definitely see that you get fitted with the right stuff. So thank you to them. Yeah, we, uh, like, I, I made the mistake of, like, putting my cell phone number on, uh, like, contact stuff mm-hmm. for, and then, because we didn't even have a shop phone. Like, now we have a shop phone, but it's, like, 940, and my phone's like, bing. My wife's like, who's texting you this late? And I, like, look at it, and it's, like, a random number. It's, like, 14.5 or 16 inch. I'm like, Jesus, man. Like, come on, man. Like, it's, it's 9 o'clock at night, you know? Uh, and... Yeah, like you know, some people like oh, that's all they think about. You know, the, but. the yeah, when all they're thinking about is like the barrel differences. Do I get a fourteen five or a sixteen right. inch? It's like dog. Like, yeah. have you considered working out? Like, right. Yeah, like <laughs> sixteen inch. You don't have to come in here and pin and weld it. Like, how about that? Yeah, you know, I'll pin and weld it if you want, but then like you're not stuck with a muzzle device. So it's it's just uh, my answer is always like, do what you want. <laughs> you yeah, know? it's like I remember I remember with, like talking to other guys. They'd always get asked like. Like even me too, getting mm-hmm. asked super nuanced questions. Like, all right, so if I'm shooting and moving, what foot do I step off with to go to the next like piece of cup? It's like athle- yeah. random stuff. It's like, I don't know, dude, just be athletic, like, or right. just work out yeah. or wield a, wield a gun or get like your reps mm-hmm. in where you know how it feels. Like it's right. not, you're overcomplicating it. Yeah. Kids in Africa are running around with AKs being little terrorists or fighting, yeah. fighting for their village. Like you're going to be okay. Like yeah. just figure it out. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm not that great of a shooter. <laughs> well, I, f- I feel like you guys are pretty good. You you especially have gotten into the longer distance of pushing out mm-hmm. AR-15s. Yeah. You, you kind of got me on that bug, too. Yeah. Well, okay, let's talk about guns. So you uh, <laughs> you you introduced, especially with Adrian of Sidewinder Concepts, who I want to get on the podcast, you introduced the longer distance or pushing out AR-15s that you wouldn't even expect to much further distances. Like, I think... Who was it? Landon and your guys' crew was had like a 10 5 with a 55 grain wolf, yeah, yeah, <laughs> pushing out to how far like five, uh, six, like seven, six, eighty, like Dang. consistently, yeah, uh, with a form one can, yeah, like so, like baffles are rattling in it, mm-hmm. you know, type of thing. Um, with like an optic, he took off a 22, yeah, yeah, and so you're just dialing in the math equation on that, and you're like, okay, now I can push this rifle off to this far. It's not optimal, but with the right math equation, you can do it, yeah, so. We, um, Jonathan, uh, uh, you know, the guy that mm. used to work for us, uh, or with us, um, he like nerds out on things a little bit more, yeah, and but he doesn't show it, right? So he was just like, Yeah, man, like I want to do scoped carving class, like a like a recce thing. It was like when Grantham dropped that video about recce, yeah, everything was recce, right? It's like recce season, um, and um, what uh, a training company that we used to, uh, kind of associate ourselves with who stole nods from me um we, we're no longer <laughs> friends obviously but um we i hope that'll do it that'll put a damper in the relationship yeah uh so they were hosting a sidewinder class mm-hmm. um kind of like we do now so we flew out got the hotel i was told not to get a car because they'd have one for me i was told not to get a a, a hotel because they'd have a place for me to stay and we get there and they're like you guys are camping I'm like, oh, not we, like us, just us in in a car that's not ours with your camping gear. Like, okay, like fuck it, I'll sleep in the dirt, I guess, you yeah. know. Uh, so it, it was like a, it was a big move. Uh, three people went, you know, it was thousands of dollars, right? Mm. And it was so overbooked. Um, I was like, we literally spent two hours citing. Gubernex guns. Like, you show up to a recce class with an, like, people are torquing down their optics. I'm like, what the, like, why are you wasting your time? Our time, the instructor time. Yeah. So it was just like a massive waste of time, but I saw the potential um, in the course and mm. Adrian. So we all went to a diner after um, and we just stayed talking with Adrian. And you met him. Mm. Super nice guy, mm. really knowledgeable. Um, really easy to get along with, has no problems going down the rabbit holes uh, as long as there's like a cup of tea or a bottle of vodka in front of us and he just talks to you about whatever you want till you guys are both passed out. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what we did. Uh, And I was like, dude, I see the potential in this. We want to start loading like match grade ammo, but we don't want to do that like blindly. We want to like test it, use it. Um, so like, what would it cost for you to come out to us? And he named a price. I'm like, dude, that's less money than I spent here. Mm -hmm. And that would be for everyone in our shop. So he flew down, 
he did like a three day uh, class for me and all my guys. Um, and it just opened our eyes. And we're like, dude, this is this is legit. So after that, that's when we started loading all our match grade stuff, 77, 75 grain stuff. Um, after we got, you know, uh, schooled on it essentially. Um, and it's just been, you know, we've been pushing it ever since. Um, but yeah, so we were kind of known for like the scoped carving guys, you know, like yeah. everybody come out. We literally make thousand yard shots with five, five, six consistently, um, with 14, five rifles. Um, we have students show up with 10 fives with magnified optics. We have people show up with, uh, like M4, like front sight post, you yeah. know, with iron sights. Yeah. We'll lend them an optic and a bipod and they perform better than the dude with the $10,000 rifle. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like, it's just legit, you know, that, yeah. that'll get you, um, you took the class. It'll get you from like not knowing what to do after 300 yards to making, you know, mile shots mm -hmm. by, by the time you're done, if mm -hmm. you got the right caliber. I remember being on patrol and I took an LPVO course mm -hmm. and they only, like we push it out to four to 600, but there was never any like dialing or anything like that. Yeah. It was like, all right, this is going to be your hold. It wasn't as much of the math equation mm -hmm. that they gave us because the idea with the law enforcement LPVOs wasn't like engaging bad guy mm -hmm. out to 500 it's, it wasn't that right. it was like pinpoint shot within 100 100 meters because there was a, like a at that time there was a few different shootings that took place not only here in phoenix but around like the country where guys like were taking very dialed in shots for hostage situations like bad guy holding a gun in, with a, like a baby you know mm -hmm. it's like hey you better make a really good shot and at that time it was pretty cool because the lpvo wasn't as widespread use for law enforcement and even on patrol, it was kind of like unheard of. But now getting to use it and see it, like I had had a, a I had a cheap Strike Eagle, and funny enough, it still works pretty good. Like I, I had a, in my patrol car rattling around, driving all over the place for six months. Took it back out; it was still zeroed. Like at fifty yards, I could put it right between the eyes, and that's exactly what I wanted because I'm not trying to make super long distance shots. I also had a backup aim point because I trust aim point with my life, but. Um, I took that, it, that was pretty sick because I got to take that course. So I bought like a $200 Strike Eagle for a deal and I got to take 40 hours off of work just to go shoot. Right. So I was pretty jazzed. But um, it was really cool to see that transition. And then just even for the civilian sector, like the well prepared civilian sector, like dialing that in even more, where it was like, all right, this is going to, there's definitely something to it of getting the most out of your weapons platform. So I, I think it's some pretty cool stuff. Like it's, I think a lot of guys are like, oh, a 200 meter shot. That's, that's kind of far. And it's like, no, that's not really that far at all. That's very close. Yeah. You should be able to make a 500 yard shot with a red dot. Yeah. I, I mean, it, we do it all the time. So mm -hmm. there's always this, you know, topic like 45 degree or top mounted, right? They both have, you know, for red dots mm -hmm. on an op, uh, on a magnified optic. And for me, it's top mounted mm -hmm. because, um, you know, when we're out in the spot, and we know where the targets are, but we bring out people that don't know where the targets are. Yeah. We're literally explaining it to you. We're, it's by this cactus, next to this bush, after this ridge, and like you can't find it, yeah. right? So imagine if that's like actually a person, yeah. right? And they're moving, and they're moving so fast that you lose them and you're like looking through a magnified optic. Mm -hmm. um, for me, the, the top mounted red dot is great because you can just kind of scan and like, oh, there it is, that's general direction, just drop your head down. Yeah and you're there, mm. right? So um, where we typically sight in, you know, like we're in the middle in between the two valleys yeah. or in the valley between the two mountains, uh, you pan over to the left or the north, all the targets are up the hill. Uh, you can just pop those at 500 yards, aim at like the head and you're hitting center mass, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, yeah, 200 yards is nothing. Uh, no. You should be able to point in like, it should be an impact. Um, I think what's cool about it is being able to like, assess the situation, digest the information, mm -hmm. and make an educated uh, an educated uh, shot, like a first-round impact. Yeah. That's what turns me on. That's like, very, yeah. you know, not like, it was like, oh, I shoot. Like, yeah, you walked the dog, you took 12 shots, and then you found your hold. Yeah. Like, that's not realistic, no. you know. Uh, target's moving, and you're trying to find your hold, right? Um, like, that's just not realistic. No. Uh, we can now show up we'll have a range finder, but if we don't, you can use a bunch of things we learned in that class mm. to estimate range mm -hmm. and then plug that into our little heads, into our little charts and make an educated shot, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's what's cool to me. And not only that is, um, 
dude, it's more fun. Uh, there's like a little bit of exercise going on. You know, you get yeah. a backpack. It's yeah. like a little bit more, like it feels more real, right? It's more fun than like the flat range. Like, yeah. all right, we're going to do a build drill from six yards right. as fast as you can. It's like, all right, that's fun. But after a while, it's like, this isn't the most practical. Yeah. I don't, I don't be this close to someone that's trying to kill me, mm -hmm. ideally, you know? Yeah. And, and it makes 200 rounds like last four hours. Yeah. And every round means something, mm -hmm. right? As opposed to just like slaying cardboard bodies yes. at 20 yards or 100 yards. On the yards flat or range where there's you know, no cover. Yeah. You're not using like, all right, you're proning out, using whatever micro terrain feature mm -hmm. there is. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they're both fun. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like you should practice both. Sure. You know, knock yourself out, do yeah. whatever you think is fun. Um, you don't need a crazy expensive rifle. Like, we've had people show up with like Ruger, like $500 rifles, man, and mm -hmm. like they kill it. Yeah. You know, it's typically a 16 inch. And that, believe it or not, like that's yeah, it's not as sexy as a fourteen five, no. or, but yeah, or the thirteen nine, <laughs> or know, the twelve yeah, five, yeah, yeah it's banks. Oh, okay. Like it's all you need, you know. So um, yeah, it's definitely um, it's definitely more fun uh, to me, and um, it's uh, it's perfect uh, like cool weather stuff. We do it during the summer too. It's just mm -hmm. a little sketchy with like snakes and stuff, but yes. But we still do it. We do it year round. Funny enough, at our spot, I've only ever seen one rattlesnake. Yeah, I, I haven't seen. I've seen more rattlesnakes uh, like crossing the road. Mm. Um, like there's javelina out there. There's coyotes, all that good stuff. But I've never seen uh, a snake like where we actually shoot. Yeah, which is kind of nice. Yeah, I did get eaten alive by ants this one time. So yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That was that was pretty fun. Was that at the scoped carbon? Yeah. Class? Yeah. 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 There was like a big old hill right behind us. I, we haven't been out there in a minute. We got to go check it out. Um, we moved like 10 tons of dirt to make that place happen mm -hmm. by hand. Yeah. So that's cool. That's my caveman. Your caveman brain yeah. <laughs> kicking in, dude. Making yeah. your dwelling. Yeah. So, but uh, what what are you carrying today? I uh, just got an HK USB compact. Okay. I've been carrying, like, it's not my best shooting gun mm -hmm. as far as handguns go, but it's just so comfy. And I've been okay. enjoying carrying a double action in my yeah. pants. Like, I know nothing is going to happen mm -hmm. if I carry another gun. Right. I just enjoy the feeling of having a double action in my pants. Right. Like I know, I know nothing's gonna go go bad, mm -hmm. but the double action is nice. Yeah, uh, it, it is. Um, it's a nice feature to have, like you know, the ability to restrike a primer. Mm. Um, dude, we, we after COVID, the supply chain has been screwed. Mm. Um, you can't trust your grandma. <laughs> yeah, uh, like everything is just so hit and miss nowadays. Um, primers are one of them things. Projectiles. Um, it's just like the quality of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super spotty, right? So I used to be the kind of guy where, like, I'd open a box and I'd have one bad f experience. I'm like, this is trash. Yeah. Never use this again, right? Um, but in reality, uh, it's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. It's only a matter of time. You're dealing with man made components inspected by a piece of machinery. Yeah. Or a human. Like, I don't know which one's better. Yeah, they're not you, sending you know? this stuff to space either. So right. it's like. So, um, like, it's not like it's not catastrophic or catastrophic, like whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but like there has been bad batches of primers. Um, and it's a nice feature to like if you need it for your life, right? And you're going to go and it goes click. But then, you know, typically you just extract that round and go to the next one. You pick that round up, put it again, and it goes off. So mm -hmm. it's definitely a nice feature to have. Yeah, for sure. I'd agree. Yeah. Uh, I've been enjoying a lot. It's either going to be that or I'm working on a Breda PX4 video, The okay. Storm. So I've been trying that gun out, carrying it. Nice. So I can't get over how they look. They they're so how Landon Tactical whipped them up. I think they look pretty good right. now. And you know, I think one of the fun things is that I plan on doing like an Inception theme with the video. So it should be fun in that because in that movie, Leonardo DiCaprio, he uses the PX4 oh, Storm. Nice. Which of all the guns to pick, as far as like a protagonist handgun goes, is definitely a a weirder one. Right. It does, yeah. I know it does look weird, but I'm trying to give it a shot because it's so out there. Yeah. It shoots pretty good, especially with the comp they included. They have this little ingenious device that goes over, or goes over the uh, rail. And oh, I they, see. they attach the Surefire X300 to that comp. Mm. So a cool thing is that I believe because there's no threads for that comp too, it's legal in the weird states that are like all the common right. states. So yeah, it's like rail attached. Yeah, so you just attach it via rail. The problem is, is like the holsters. So there's not a, a big holster infrastructure mm -hmm. for them right now. So it's if you want, Mike's. yeah, <laughs> I had to do that for another handgun, but yeah, no, it's uh, not ideal. Yeah, because I want to use like the Safari Land stuff, but right. that, like Safari Land doesn't have anything for a comped PX4 Storm. Yeah. So makes sense. Kydex hit up LAS. Yeah, or uh, Superstition um, holsters. They're at the mm. event. Um, 
I'm sure he can whip something up for yeah, it. Yeah, I'd ideally like to get a pancake holster, probably f with the comp on it. Then I got a tier one holster for carrying without the comp, but then there's no weapon light on it, which I don't like. So mm -hmm. yeah. can't, I can't have my cake and eat it, apparently, right now yeah. with that gun. Um, no weapon light on that. Is that typically how you carry? Uh, and typically, I usually, all my guns typically have a weapon light. But if I'm just going around, like if I know where I'm going throughout the day, I typically won't have a weapon light okay. on. Like if I'm just like coming here and going home or going somewhere else and going home, it's right. like I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. If I'm going to be out and about and I don't know where I'm going, I like to have a weapon light on me and then a handheld light. So yeah, it's, it's all that EDC stuff. Yeah, I hate stuff in my pockets, man. Yeah. Um, but we took a couple of pretty eye-opening classes. Mm. Um, and if I had to pick... Like, if I can only pick one thing, mm -hmm. um, it'd be my light. Yeah. It, you use it way more. Yeah. Right? Um, for us, like, we're working on stuff. We use it, um, you know, in and out. Like, yesterday, uh, one of the streets was closed. And, like, there's this field. And I'm just like, ah, I'm pretty sure I could pop through that. Mm -hmm. And, like, instead of steering my truck, I just wake out the mod light, hit it. I'm like, I can go through that. Yeah. Get halfway through it. My truck sinks about half. like, all right. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna bail yes all I the can. construction yeah. guys are staring at us like who the fuck is that guy you know gentlemen um, yeah. yeah so um yeah I don't, I don't carry a weapon light on, on, on my gun because it's just too big yeah and like i'm not a small guy like i'm fag i love handles and stuff so um it's gonna be the difference between me like being honest with myself and actually like carrying it and not carrying it mm -hmm. so if i have a weapon mounted light I'm probably like i'm gonna carry the gun less mm -hmm. and Every morning I make that decision, like, if, am I going to carry this gun all day long? If the answer is yes, I'll put it in my waistband. If the answer is no, I'll just leave it at home. Mm -hmm. um, so we ran through a few scenarios at the shop. Um, we did, like, a force-on-force -force EDC, mm -hmm. and everyone leaves their gun on the table. Mm -hmm. So we did this thing where, like, we're all working. Dude pops in, like, not really looking to start anything, right? But the opportunity is there because there's a gun there, there's a gun there, there's a gun there. Mm -hmm. Music's going, bullets dancing, dudes freaking, you know, working the machine, guys over there packaging. I'm in the office, like, can't hear nothing, right? Mm. Um, they're going to get us every time. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know yeah. what I mean? So, you know, new shop rule is, like, if you're going to, like, have your gun at the shop, it needs to be on you or leave it in your truck. Yeah. It, you know, that that's kind of what it boils down to. Um, pretty eye-opening. Mm -hmm. Um so I see a little bit more value, just like a like a handheld light, yeah. and then like a gun with no light. Um, not every situation demands you poking a gun out, you know, to use the light, yeah. as opposed to you know you just use a regular light. It's less uh, invasive. Well, it's definitely and the legality of like right. you're not committing aggravated assault off the rip, right? Because if you have to pull that weapon light out, yeah, and you're like using your weapon light to identify if this is a threat or not. You right. just committed aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, right? At the very least. So they can hit me up legally there. Handheld light, hey, what are you doing? Yeah. And then if they're like, I want to hurt you, it's like, okay, cool. You just... and, and I guarantee you, like, you pop a mod light or mm. a surefire in their eyeballs, like, that is a, they're yeah. going to look away. It's Yeah, they're going to look away or they're going to, it's going to bring their intentions to light is what right. I always say. They're either going to back off or they're going to commit. Yeah. So you, then you'll know. Yeah. You'll be good to go. Yeah, for sure. But I used a handheld light all the time on patrol. Right. It was very handy. So I'm a big I'm a big fan of the handheld light and yeah, the mod light OKW head with the throw it has mm -hmm. and the beam. It's pretty nice to have in your pants. Yeah, I never saw myself spending 350 bucks on a light. Mm. Um, but after taking that course, just seeing the value and how it could be used, and all, I'm just like, man, I spend more money on dumb crap. Like I'm just gonna buy it. Yeah, you know? and it gets dark every day. Exactly. So. Yeah. So. It's a good investment. It is handy. Um, but yeah, um, do you try to carry, I mean, it sounds like you carry a couple different things, but um, something that I noticed, uh, we're always giving bullet crap at the shop and he's like, you know, grabs people on the neck, like, I'm going to beat you at the competition today or mm -hmm. something like that. So he he never says it to me and I'm like, yeah. all right, buddy. Like, you know, they, they all put stuff on their whiteboard and then like we invoice them later or something. So he had like about a $900 tab and I was like, listen, buddy. If you beat me at the competition tonight, I will personally pay for your nine hundred dollar tab. <laughs> but if I win, you got to buy me dinner five times in a row. Yeah. And for him, he's just like, I'm like, dude, nine hundred bucks, like dinner yeah. five times, like yeah. you know, like the odds are amazing. Well, yeah. And you know, he, he's a he's a pretty good shooter. So, um, Radian sent me a uh, a comp or a, is it the Ramjet? The Ramjet. Um, 
and I threw it on the gun, and uh, we the previous competition uh, we met the Overwatch Precision guys there, mm-hmm. and they were showing us uh, like a combination of a trigger. So you get like a fact a, a, a factory Glock performance trigger, mm-hmm. um, and you use the Overwatch Precision shoot, and it feels amazing. Yeah. Um, so I was like, hey, you know what, like perfect uh like i'm gonna try that out at the comp so i put a new trigger on the gun i put the radian i get to the comp it's malfunction city dude <sighs> and i'm just like oh so he smoked me i owe 900 bucks um Dang. but uh i was just like man I'm, I'm just gonna go back to my gun mm-hmm. right and uh i put everything back on it and i told myself i need to practice with the gun i'm gonna carry and that's what i'm gonna carry yes right um when I shoot a Glock at a competition, dude, I'm trash. Mm-hmm. When I shoot my staccato, like I'm top ten. Mm-hmm. You know, like yesterday, I think I was like third place or something out of like seventy people. Um, so I just like staccatos for comp for duty. Glock nineteen is for EDC, and when we're like training EDC stuff, which we've been doing, at, like all the comps we've been shooting, we've been shooting from concealment, mm-hmm. uh, and we're still placing top ten. You know, nice. so it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I just told myself I was going to carry the same gun. And just quit changing. That's it. I mean, that's what you should do. I yeah. for YouTube stuff because I, I like to have a different perspective when mm-hmm. I'm talking about the gun. Like, right. okay, so I actually carried it. I was in theory entrusting my life to this product while I was carrying it, and then running the different ammo through it, trying to see how far I can. Because it's like with the evolution of the active shooters taking place, I want to be able to hit someone in the head from 25 plus yards. Yeah, and on like the first draw impact, like how. How am I doing with that? Certain handguns, I definitely do way better. Other handguns, I wet the bed. So there is that aspect. But if I'm really going out into the world, yeah, I have my go-to. I've been trying out, and, and typically it's like a Glock 19 with an acro. I feel pretty confident with it. Uh, I just I like using Glocks, but it's fun to get away from them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's kind of all over the place in some regards. Yeah, and handgun shooting is just like you got to stick with it and shoot with it all the time to be really proficient, at least in my opinion, yeah. because they are just a harder gun to master than a rifle. Ideally, if I could carry a rifle with me in normal society, like everywhere I go, I would, but no. even though we have the Second Amendment, it's kind of frowned upon in the country. Yeah, it's kind of just like, I don't know. It's cool. It's cool. And you should do it yeah. if you can, Like, but I don't know. Yeah. Like, I, I get lazy, man. Like, I'm just like, it's going to be a truck gun. I'm like, that's the dumbest shit ever. Well, yeah, my f- s- yeah, it's like someone's going to break in and yeah. steal my gun from the truck. It's like, mm-hmm. ah, dude, unless yeah. you got a, a decent cage in there for something. But Yeah, yeah. There's I, I never leave anything in my vehicle of any value because you can, like, you know, like throw a Pop-Tart at my truck and the door opens and, mm. like, it's a manual, so you, like, just roll away with it. Yeah, you know? window, so, window breakers are very cheap. You walk up, you press against the window, it's done. You open, yeah. the, open the thing up, everything and there's yours yeah or what is it the uh the um the, the flippers cer- the cer- oh no, those i think the ceramic setup where you oh, like yeah. have like a, a piece of like the what's the ceramic called spark plug the spark plug yeah i don't know like a piece of like rubber band or like a bungee cord and you just pull mm-hmm. it back and you break the window like it's nothing yeah so crime yeah, yeah crime um yeah, I think people are using like uh like punches like center punches that are spring loaded mm-hmm. um, i had those when i was on patrol yeah so. I, st- I still carry them with me like at least in my vehicle mm mm-hmm. mhm Pretty useful for like checking if like a car's on fire. Right, you can pop the window real quick, make sure no one's in there. It's like all right, let let that thing burn. So yeah, that's probably better than like the tomahawk I carry. You know, it probably looks like yeah. I'm gonna be killing someone. So <laughs> I'm just like, this is well, nice I, I remember like I carried one on my on my patrol vest, and there was actually like a an engine fire in a car that crashed. So I ran up there real quick, punched out the windows, make sure there's no like kids burned alive, and it's like all right, cool, no one's in there, we're good. Let it burn. Let the car burn yeah. until fire shows up and puts it out. Yeah. Or it's like if there's just an emergency where you got to get a, a window broken, trying to beat it with a baton. Yeah. Like there's techniques to it, and it's just so easy. It's literally so easy to just go, poof, and the entire thing shatters. Yeah. It's like instead of trying to beat it over and over. Yeah, it's actually not a bad idea. I should probably uh, implement that into my toolkit or something. It's good to have. Yeah, yeah, trying to beat a car window, especially like when the blood's going, mm-hmm. and you're not hitting it right, and it's just bouncing back at you. You feel like an idiot. Yeah. Ask me how I know. Yeah. You feel like an idiot, dude. Yeah. Um. I always carry a half inch and a 10 millimeter wrench in my center console mm-hmm. uh, in my truck because I've literally saved two trucks from catching fire by disconnecting their batteries. Nice. Um, it's like negative 38 degrees in North Dakota, and we're just sitting there. And like, th- like it's so cold that just like the exhaust is like you can see it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but this dude's truck is just smoking from the hood next to me. Uh, the dude's like on the phone, doesn't even realize it. Mm-hmm. And 
I'm just like, man, that doesn't seem right. So I pop out of my truck and pound on his hood, and I'm just like, truck smoking. He's like, oh, shit. Pops the hood open, and there's a power cable that's, I don't know, like eight gauge or something. It's like pretty thick. And essentially, like the sheath rubbed through, and it was touching the frame. And it's just like, you're not you're yanking that off with your hand. Like, no. you'll burn your hand off. And yeah. I was just like, oh, luckily, like, I had this half inch because I was just working on my truck, like, yesterday yeah. or something. Uh, and I grab, pop over there, like, disconnect the battery. And, like, that dude's truck legit would have burned. Uh, and in North Dakota, the reason you need a new truck, like, every couple of years is because, like, if your truck breaks down, you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, like your truck will just stop. It'll just turn off. And I guess in you the guys road. apparently decided to work on the planet Hoth up there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I always keep like a at least a crescent wrench, um, mm. and uh, you know, a couple of a couple of wrenches. My center console. That's that's my tip of the day. <laughs> yeah, a free Bajo tip of the day. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. So, but uh, but yeah, man. So let's talk about pizza. I was hoping we could avoid this topic because you are my you're my new arch nemesis when it comes to the pizza the pizza world. Yeah. So what what do you what's on your head? So I it was when we first met. Um you I think Nick was like, dude, this guy's got a pizza oven. Mm. And uh Nick had like came over to my house a couple of times and like when people come over to my house like it's a feast. Like mm. I'm making food like everything from scratch, you know. Everybody's just, eating. Everybody eats. Uh, like I don't invite people over my house unless like we're eating, mm. right? Um, so Nick was like, "Dude, he he cooks or something, something like that." He got brought up, and he's like, "He's got a pizza oven," and I was like, "Oh, sick!" And then you were like, "Yeah, we should have you guys over for pizza someday." I was like, "Oh, that's cool." I was like, "You know, if I get invited, I I'm gonna uh like try to bring something." I was like, "Maybe I'll make my own dough, right?" Mm. Like I had never made pizza dough till that moment. Yeah, and I was like, "All right, YouTube it, bro." There's like three ingredients. Mm. And uh, I've been making pizza dough since, and, like, it just gets better, like, every single just time. Just getting dialed Every man. single time. Yeah. Uh, and I see you make pizzas in your brick oven. I just have a regular oven. Mm. Uh, my landscaper, when I said I wanted a pizza oven, he pretty much called me retarded mm. and said I was never going to use it. And I got nervous, and I was like, all right, whatever, dude. <laughs> like, I'm he, not going to do it. He lied to you. You're, yeah. you're going to use that mug all the time. You're going to love it. Yeah, probably. So You're going to get yourself some nice olive wood from the olive mill. Yeah. That's what I do. That's legit. And so, okay. So I know, spoiler, I don't make my own dough. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I I think that's the only thing you're missing. Yes. Yeah. If I wanted to spend more time on it, I could. But the nice thing is, is that with a wood fire oven, it's already kind of a process. Yeah. Because you have to sit out there like for an hour before you start cooking. You got to light up the fire, get, get it going in the mm-hmm. center, push everything over off to the right because I'm right-handed. So I like to cook on the left side of it. And like all the cleaning process too of like wiping down the inside of the oven once you do it with a wet towel letting it get nice and hot, then it gets to the right cooking point too, mm-hmm. so it's not too hot. So it's all a bit of a process, right. and it's like I don't want to have to worry about doing dough too because if I'm hosting people at the house and I want to have like that going too, it's like, all right, I have to make dough like what, a day or two in advance? Or do you just do it the same no, day? No, so the, the, what I found, uh, so it's perfect actually because mm. if you start your fire and you do all that you just mentioned, the minute you get done with that as it's like, you know, the fire is like building up or getting to the right temperature. You can go inside, you grab flour, mm-hmm. yeast, and water, and you push a button in your mixer. Mm. And then once that's done, you put in a bowl mm-hmm. with olive oil and you let it rest for an hour. By the time your fire's done, yeah. your dough's done. And that's the best time to make it because it's room temp. Um, like the minute you put it in the fridge, like it just. Like, your cook time's different. Yeah. Like, the rise is different. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, now the yeast is, like, dormant, all this other Interesting. crap. Interesting. So. I'll have to give it a shot then. Yeah. So, I actually brought you a gift, and I want you to open it. Okay. And everything you need, you probably already have at home, but the one ingredient you might not have is in there. So, some yeast. That's all you need. Active dry. Active yeast. dry yeast. Well, thank you, dude. And then a booty bag. A patch and then a uh, T-shirt from the event that you probably didn't get. I did not get. It. Yeah, I did not get a T-shirt. So, Bajo showed up with swag, dude. Thank you yes, so sir. much. Absolutely, man. man. I appreciate yes, that. Sir. Yeah, no, I'm definitely gonna. Have, so, I see you making your pizzas in an oven. Mm-hmm. I respect it. There's just some, I got. there's a, there's a magic with the pizza oven. Yeah. So even with the dough I buy, because I buy a dough from a pizza shop. Mm-hmm. Venez, uh, Venezis. No, it's uh, Brooklyn V's. Okay. So I'll, I'll get it from there because it's close. It's mm-hmm. all supposed to be convenient. Right. And even with that, 
it's still pretty solid. Like, I, I'm I'm pretty picky with my pizza too. I'll mm-hmm. throw it in there, and it's not because I make it. And it comes out with from the wood fire oven. There's like a magic that happens. Oh, in absolutely. There, and it's delicious. Yeah. Like just the 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 dough consistency, the sauce consi- the cheese, everything about it is like pretty good. Yeah. And it holds up. So. Yeah, you could probably throw like a DiGiorno in there, and like it'd be fucking. Pro- way you know, probably. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, just the way it cooks up yeah. in there. It's, it's there's there's some magic to yeah. the wood fire. I think you deserve. I know. I a think brick so oven. too. Um, I I don't think I have the room for it anymore, but maybe maybe, maybe. in your next house or yeah. something. But if if you do build one, I would say make sure you get like a built in some sort of counter next to it. Mm-hmm. That's my biggest complaint. I don't, yeah. I don't have that. We have like the wood storage on the bottom and then we have the oven above it. Oh, right. And then we don't have anything for like prepping the pizzas mm-hmm. next to it. Yeah. So that's kind of annoying, but we, we use it a lot, especially when the weather's nice. When it's mm-hmm. hot out, yeah, it's kind of like the season's over. Yeah. Because it's 100 degrees out and you're standing next to an oven. Yeah, get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, the fact that you can uh, get olive uh, tree mm. wood from the olive mill. That's legit. That's nice. I'm, I'm sure that adds a lot it to it. It does, yeah. Um, so I keep salt in an olive uh, bowl, mm-hmm. olive wood bowl. And then um, if you get a bowl for your pizza dough, mm-hmm. you drizzle that with olive oil, and then you throw your dough in there and let it rise. Uh, bro, it's that more <laughs> Yeah, it's that more legit. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. All right. Yeah. I'll give it a shot, dude. Yeah, I'll have shot. to make my own dough now. Yeah. It's easy. It's uh, It takes three minutes, and then you just let it sit. Yeah. And then when you're ready to use it, just pop it out. Do the same thing you do with the other one. Mm-hmm. That's it. So <sighs> Well, you came on my own podcast and put me on blast about pizza. Dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude, it's it's so funny because like uh, other people tag me mm-hmm. like when they're eating pizza mm-hmm. or they're making pizza and they're like, like, how would admin rate this or something? Like it's just like it's like <laughs> a thing now. Frankie, first bite, everyone knows the yeah. rules, dude. Yeah. Uh like a, a dude, um, from Clear Six, he literally brought me pizza dough, or uh, mm. I'm sorry, pizza sauce. Mm. And like just looking at it, it's like, damn, that looks good. You can still see like the seeds Ooh. from like the peppers and yeah. stuff like that. So um, I'm gonna use that. There's a there's a pizza joint in town that I want to try really bad. So I was watching this show on Netflix, and it was about all about like pizzas. Mm-hmm. And th- apparently, this one in town, I'm trying to remember the name. What's the name? What's the name? What's the name? It's um, it was. It's here in Phoenix. He's got two spots. Apparently, it's one of the best in the world. Hmm. Like people will I feel fly like they all in. Say that though. Well, well, it's on. It was on like a documentary, mm-hmm. and they were talking about how it's so impressive. People actually fly into Phoenix just to try the pizza. Yeah, it's down in Phoenix somewhere. I'm totally blanking on the name, but it's one of those I want to try out really bad because right. I think they use the wood fire oven as well. Yeah, yeah I think it's like a that. That's what makes him big. Speaks a pizza. Mm-hmm. You know, is the oven the mm-hmm. way you cook it for sure. So. Yeah. Uh, do you use fresh mozzarella or like shred mozzarella? Well, I think we use fresh mozzarella that we shred up. Okay. Sick. Mm. Nice. We're not like making our mozzarella though. It's all. Nah, no. Yeah, ain't nobody got I don't, got, I don't got the infrastructure for that, yeah. man. It's not like the grated cheese yeah. bags. Right. It's not like that. So. Yeah, milk, vinegar, and water. Who's got time to make cheese, bro? They dog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, try- I'm, I'm not trying to make this a whole ordeal yeah. for a pie. It's not like my livelihood yeah. depends on it, but yeah. maybe if YouTube tanks, I'll just start a pizza shop. Yeah. Um, bro, it's, it's, it's crazy how, uh, so you're a fit guy. Mm. What's your diet like? Like, what, what do you eat? Like, uh, do you eat a lot of processed food? I try not to. So my main diet as of recently, so I, I realized this too, where I was drinking too much. So I pretty much- Like cu- alcohol? Yeah. Okay. I, just, I just pretty much cut out booze from my nice. diet. If I do drink, pretty much something like red wine mm-hmm. because of my Roman, my, my Italian mm-hmm. Roman ancestry. Right. So like wine's been like your body's like all right, I can process wine. As far as the other stuff goes, it's just not natural. And even alcohol in general is just not natural to the human body. So I've cut out a lot of drinking, which helped out. And then if I most of my meals it's like beef and eggs. Okay. So I'll do ground beef with eggs. And then I've even found like doing honey over your ground beef tastes pretty good. So you get a little bit of carbs in there. I'm not trying to go for like a bodybuilding competition. I just want to feel like all around good all the time. Right. So like a high protein diet to me feels really, really good. Mm-hmm. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah, um, I I try not. I mean, I don't eat processed food. Um, mm-hmm. Like I try not to. Um, try to make everything like at home from scratch. Yeah, and, and you'd be surprised how like I cook at home. Um, so everything I make, like um, like we we were having dinner with some friends, and they were talking about how she changed like the dressing or, or like the gravy or something. Is like, mm-hmm. oh, he he likes McCormick. 
And uh, my wife was like pretty much trying not to laugh because mm. like I make her fucking gravy from scratch. You know mm. what I mean? So it's just like uh, um, like you can only control that stuff so much, right? Like, yeah. y- you know, like I'm sure it's flour. Like everything's all processed to a point. Well, I right? was like, looking at like basic stuff from the store, like right. ingredients. And I was never like this. Like I didn't used to care. But then I was like, all right, what's the stuff I'm putting into my body? Right. So I'm looking at like ingredients on white bread from the store. And it's like one of the ingredients is like, Soybeans, like why are there why is there soybean in this in bread? Right, and then there's three ingredients to make bread. Yeah, so I was like, all right, you know what? If I'm gonna eat stuff, I want it to be as like natural as possible, or organic as possible. And I was never like that until recently. And it's like once you do that, it's like, buddy, I'm not eating the red dye forty. Like, get out of right. here. Oh yeah, no. So not, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, uh, I I used to not like I used to think like like I'm a man, just eat whatever. And like my buddy Landon, mm. you, you know. uh Thunder Monks, mm-hmm. Landon. Um, he was in North Dakota with us, and like we're oil field dudes. Like yeah. we're, we're pounding a, a twenty four rack like a night. We're eating steaks and lobster and shit like this. And we like we ne- we didn't care what we ate because mm-hmm. you'd go and you work it off the next day. Um, and he's over there like, oh yeah, I don't drink this. This has sucralose in it or something. Like yeah. what the fuck is that? Like what are you gay or something? Like eating the ingredients, <laughs> you know? Uh, <laughs> it's fine to be gay. Yeah, uh, but. Um, he, um, yeah, like he pretty much like set the example for me and it was like, it's not whack Mm. to like look at the ingredients and then you start looking at ingredients on stuff and it's just like, wow, dude, like everything is trash. Mm -hmm. Why does everything have oil in it? Yeah. You know, like, was it the, uh, which oil, like canola oil or other like vegetable oils? It, it, dude, it's all rancid. It's all literally machinery grade mm-hmm. oil. Mm-hmm. Um, I use butter, yeah, and ghee and tallow. I, I have to use all the stuff that like the health department say is going to give you like high cholesterol. All that, right, all yeah. that stuff makes me feel so good. Yeah, because then you look at like the the ministers of health in all the propaganda. first world countries. They're all like these really fat body folks. Yeah. And I'm like, what do they know about health? How come it's never like a meat stud? That's jacked to the gills, telling me that I should, what I should eat. It's never like that. It's whoever pays them more money is yeah. who they're going with. I would know. definitely say there's de- got, there's going to be some conspiracies in the food industry, like the FDA, yeah, Food yeah, Drug dude. Agency, uh, not not buying it a lot of the stuff that they're pushing. Remember, like being in school and they're like, you need nine servings of pasta. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, I'm like, sure if you're getting like grain from the source, yeah, like where, like, do you know how easy it is to make pasta, bro? Very eggs, easy. water, and salt. Yes, like look at a pasta thing, and mm. like there's more. There's 25 ingredients. Like and dude, and our water in general. Like, I remember being yeah. in Europe, like in Finland, and eating all their food. I felt way better than what I was eating here, yeah. and it tasted better too. Right. So, I think there's definitely something going on in the food and water here in the yeah. states where it's just overall this not good for us. And I'm not like a nutritionist, or I, I don't know all the ins and outs, but just from my simple monkey brain, it's like I'm not, I'm not eating that. Yeah, I mean, dude, it, it takes so much for me to, like, not be an obese piece of crap. Mm-hmm. So, like, I have to watch what I eat mm-hmm. uh, or else I'll be 400 pounds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, it, yeah, like, there's nothing wrong with trying to, like, not consume trash. Yeah. You know, and it's so easy. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it's easier to just swing by a drive through and, it like, eat McDonald's. It's cheaper than, like, going to the store and getting groceries. Yeah. Um, the problem is ground beef and eggs is super cheap. Yeah. Like it's it's a pretty cheap meal all said and because I can I can cook up an entire thing of ground beef right. like carton of eggs even though everything's going up in price right. and I feel like that's still cheaper than going out to eat right so well, what kind of eggs do you buy um I usually get everything from probably like Trader Joe's okay. nice. if I ideally I'd like to get an egg source here in town straight yeah. from the chicken yeah I even had a kick where I was drinking raw milk mm-hmm. my wife was like you can't where do, you do that. that so you can get them at Sprouts here so there was oh, a there was a big thing back in the day and I think it was a war on like individual dairy farms. And there's kind of been a war on like the individual in that sense, I think ever since the industrial revolution where people used to be so much more self-reliant, like they had chickens or goats or whatever else or gardens. Um, And that all went away, you know, living in suburbia. So raw milk, I think was another one of those things where they passed a law where it had to be pasteurized and it, the pasteurizing equipment takes a bunch of money to get, so it put a lot of these individual dairy farmers out of business. Right, prices them out. Yeah, prices them out, and now you're buying pasteurized stuff. Which there's risk to drinking raw milk. Everyone like they even say it on the on the label, but it's like if you think about it, it's like hey, we've been drinking raw milk for 
centuries before right. this, before the turn of like the 1900s. Yeah. So what's a big deal? Maybe right. our body isn't used to it now. Maybe that risk isn't worth the reward, but I was, I wanted to try it. Like you know, how much more risk is it than pounding a bottle of vodka or something? Yeah, <laughs> you know like, I mean? yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, hey, everyone's getting blasted off booze. Right. And I'm more, like, we're worried, worried about, about milk, raw milk. Right, yeah, right. it's like, uh, okay. So that yeah. to me was like question. It's kind of like that joke of if you get chickens, you become a conspiracy theorist. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like going down that rabbit hole. But yeah, I would like to get a, a, a source for straight from the chicken eggs, yeah. ideally, or even just buying meat in general from a farmer like themselves around yeah. here. Like I would like to do that. Yeah, so we uh, we got this new friend. Um, he owns like a hundred and fifty thousand head of cattle or something. So yeah, um, what's, I, his, what's his name? Uh, Greg. Okay, I think I've met Greg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was at the event. Mm. Um, I don't know exactly what he does with them or anything. Um, uh, but I was that was something I was thinking about the other day. I was like, man, I wonder if he would like uh, whenever he's getting ready to like slaughter some cows, like if we can, because one cow for one person is too much, right? Like oh, yeah. go in with like two or three people and you know just divvy everything up mm-hmm. i know they're expensive but you know it'd be worth it yeah getting that much beef yeah because I, I love i love eating chicken beef yeah. all the big proteins i was i even had a point where i was trying to do the raw egg where mm-hmm. you just drink a raw egg but that one's pretty hard that one yeah that one's pretty tough yeah what's the benefits of drinking a raw egg over a cooked egg uh it's just time saver so oh. instead of having to if you're like in a rush you don't like, you mm-hmm. don't have to cook up an egg you can just yeah. crack a few eggs and destroy it mm-hmm. real quick yeah but the the, the texture, <laughs> the yeah, texture yeah. ain't it, dog. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I realized I watched like something on Instagram the other day. It's like this chef. He's like, "Hey, dumbasses, you're cooking eggs wrong," or something like that. Yeah. And they're like, "That's how he starts every video." Like he calls it like his audience idiots every yeah. at the beginning of every Very video. Very Gordon Ramsay ish. Yeah. He's like, "Hey, idiots, you guys are cooking scrambled eggs wrong." And then I'm like, "Oh, I'm adding salt too soon. Oh, I'm using not mm. enough butter." And I'm using too much heat. Mm-hmm. And the last two days, I've actually been making eggs like that. Bro, you've never had such good scrambled eggs. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm usually like an over easy kind of guy. Yeah. I like my eggs running with the yolk. Oh, for, for sure. Me yeah. too. But uh, just watching him, like looking at the texture of the eggs, mm. like I don't like scrambled eggs. Like to me, you ruined them. But just watching the way he cooked them, I was like, oh, I could do that. And yeah. now my kids eat them. You know yeah. what I mean? So um, I try to get, uh, you know, like the source would be ideal and yeah. we live by you know like my house is like one block away from like all the horse property mm-hmm. uh in queen creek um and my dad has a house down there so uh there's always like signs uh for people selling like fresh farm eggs and stuff yeah. like that um so if i see some i'll probably buy some and i'll yeah. let you know let me know um but uh i the, the i watched a, a thing i guess the biggest misconception is like people are like oh uh organic or free range mm-hmm. like n- like when you're buying chicken that doesn't mean anything no uh like i think free range means that they have access to like 10 feet outside of the barn yeah well they're so fat and obese like they can't even walk outside yeah. so it's just like a technicality thing unless you're buying like from an actual farmer yeah but then you're ch- like chickens are not meant to be this big bro no. like an actual chicken is like this big like yeah. little you know like what chicken tenders are is what they're like chicken breast size is you yes know? So, uh, you know, and they're tough, you know, because they're actually moving around. You know, it's mm-hmm. not the same. It, like, it honestly doesn't taste as good, mm-hmm. you know, but that's what legit ch- chicken should taste like. Um, I, I think the biggest thing is pasture raised. Like, yeah. that's the key word. Like, free range doesn't mean jack nothing. Uh, pasture raised, that means, like, they're out in a field. And then yeah. you can actually see the color difference in the egg. It's, like, orange as opposed to yellow. Yeah. So. That would be, yeah, that would be much more ideal. Mm-hmm. I, I would like for myself in the future just to get a property where it's like I have a few animals. Yep. It'd be a little bit extra work, but it's like yeah. your your grocery store's in your backyard. Right. Go get your eggs. Maybe yeah. you got some goat's milk or something, and you're good to go. Yeah, so. Instead of spending an hour on the way to the grocery store, just spend an hour feeding your chickens and buying up. all that stuff, yeah. save some money. And it's yeah. like if you want to, if you have scraps left over, you just feed it with the chickens. Mm. So I think that'd be ideal. That's life, bro. That's that's the life, dude. Getting life. a garden. Being off the grid, no one knows I exist. Yeah. I have fallen off of the face of society. That's my exit plan. Once YouTube's over, I just want to disappear. So, well, uh, is the wife down with that? Uh, she she will be. Okay, you got to get her on board. Yeah. Like I think if she has access to the in laws and like a little bit of technology, she'll be okay. That's yeah. the hard part is getting like your your old lady on board with that stuff. Because yeah. in their head, they're like, I don't want to be roughing it, but it's like, no, 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 we won't be roughing it. We'll just be very self sufficient. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think people think of off grid as like, you know, you're pooping in a bucket yeah. or something like, you got like an outhouse yeah, or something you can, like, no. 
you can make uh, like solar panels down along. Yeah, I like the idea of getting back in touch with nature a little bit more, mm -hmm. having property where it's like I have no neighbors. That would be ideal. Right. So. That'd be I, dope. Yeah. The Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been uh, a tragedy for modern mankind. Yeah. Yeah, I took the function uh, off my phone where it tells you um, how many hours you're on your phone. Yeah. Because it's ridiculous. It is a lot. Um, the way I justify it to myself is all our marketing is literally through social media. Mm -hmm. So it's like... It's just work. It, it needs to be done. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure you get a crap ton of DMs and stuff like that, but um, I'm a kind of guy where, like, my emails say zero. Mm -hmm. My text messages say zero. Like, you look at some people's stuff, and it says, like, 10,900, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I, I just, I'm anal you know, about that stuff. I got to get back to everyone and all Yeah, that. I gave up on the DMs, man. Yeah. Like, uh, if it's serious business... You can e there's a business email for it, and then I'm not a Google search engine. So if you're asking me a question, it's best if you ask someone else, right. or if you ask Google itself. Like, yeah, I think the biggest thing is like people are lazy, mm. and like the time you spent asking me about it, like you probably could have spent a little bit of that time like just doing your own research. Yeah, um, and you can probably find your answer. I, I feel like people just need the affirmation sure like it's it's coming from you like so it means you know like people call me like like hey i'm looking for your shop like can you give me the address i'm like punch it on your phone <laughs> you, you know what i mean like yeah. well, when i'm looking for something uh i try to do everything i can before i bother someone yeah you know and like we're a business you're not bothering us but like sometimes it's just a little easier to help yourself and just you know. Yeah, I would say there's definitely been uh, the curse of the American business customer service side of things where it's like the customer is always right. Right. Um, that old saying, and that's not even the full the full quote, but it's like a little bit of, hey, when you're it's a small business and you're trying to do a lot, it's like you got to maybe not bother them as much. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, feedback is good, too. Um, you know, it's like when you start, when people do, like if there's a pattern and people are asking the same question over and over, it's like, oh. Maybe I need to, you know, put a little more effort into that. Yes. It, you know what I mean? So, like, mm. it, it, it helps. But, yeah. like, sometimes people will, like, just, like, bro, type it in on Google, man. Yeah. Like, you know? I like seeing – if I get a lot of, like, the same questions, it's like, okay, maybe it's something I could address in the right. future. And yeah. then – because I don't have the time to go through everyone that's asking that question. If I was, I'd always be in my DMs. Mm -hmm. And it's like I got other stuff I have to yeah. knock out to get the show run, to yeah. get the show going. So – I just can't be spending time answer, as much as I'd love to. Right. I've thought about maybe getting someone that handles the accounts, but to me it doesn't feel as, like, personal. Yeah, so. it defeats the whole purpose of, yeah. you know, even engaging in mm -hmm. that, I feel like, you know. Well, Baja, we've been talking for a bit. I've been uh, picking your brain. I appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule because I know you're a, busy, you're a busy man. You're a busy business owner. Yeah. So I appreciate you coming out. We're going to get out of here. Cool, man. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. As always, man, I got nothing else for you guys. If you want to find Baja, where do you where do you find you at? Uh, BadlandsMunitions.co.com, uh, BadlandsMCO on IG. You heard it from the horse's yep. mouth. All right, we're getting out of here. Bye, Bye guys.